good morning and thank you for joining me for this time of morning prayer as we begin our day together on Wednesday. I'm going to begin with a beautiful hymn called Such Love. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 110. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord sends out from Zion your mighty scepter, rule in the midst of your foes. Your people will offer themselves willingly on the day you lead your forces on the holy mountains. From the womb of the morning, Light dew, your youth will come to you. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He will shatter kings on the day of his wrath. He will execute judgment among the nations, filling them with corpses. He will shatter heads over the whole earth. He will drink from the stream by the path, therefore he will lift up his head. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Today's canticle is called A Song of the Word. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. 
Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread to eat, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me fruitless, but it will accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the task I gave it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our reading this morning is taken from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Over the last week I have received um, a daily a reflection from a friend of mine and once tutor um, at college, Dr. Keith Warrington. And he has written a short reflection on a portion of today's reading. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He says the story is told of two porcupines that lived in the freezing north of Canada. They huddled together to keep warm, but had to move apart from time to time because their sharp quills caused discomfort to each other. But when the cold was intense, they overcame the pain to be warm. Often Christians have to overcome challenges in order to maintain friendship. That's where being a peacemaker is important. In the book of Acts chapter 9, we read of a time when Christians were too scared to accept a new Christian, Saul, into their community because they remembered how he persecuted them in the past. It was Barnabas who bridged the gap and brought peace where there had been the danger of disunity. Later, Barnabas stood up for Mark when he'd let Paul down taking him under his wing and restoring him. Bringing peace in times of conflict and pain caused by hurtful acts and words is a high calling. That's why Jesus characterizes such a person as a child of God. In other words, such people will be functioning as God does, bearing the hallmarks of his mission and person and thus showing themselves to be his children. Finding as if the challenges haven't been difficult enough, Jesus next says that his followers should count themselves as the happiest people on earth when they are persecuted for doing the right thing, living according to his guidelines, walking in his footsteps. 
He's not saying that we'll enjoy being persecuted and feeling pain or rejection for obeying him. The happiness is due to the fact that we're following the example of Jesus who did the same. And because of the promise offered, here Jesus repeats that promise that was offered in the first beatitude. We will be demonstrating that we are authentic members of God's kingdom. And that's Jesus' promise. That's why Matthew wants his readers to hear the words of Jesus. For following Jesus may be challenging as well as stimulating and painful as well as being energizing. But the rewards are remarkable. We have the assurance that we are permanent members of God's community, able to benefit from his resources, his life and his love. So let us say together the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. So let us pray. Reminded, Lord, in that reading from Matthew, that we are called to be peacemakers. We pray this day, Lord, for the world, the church, and ourselves. Father, your kingdom rules over all. Have mercy on our broken and divided world. For we are your family, and you call us to live together as brothers and sisters. And so, Lord, help us to overcome the barriers that often divide us from one another. Bless every effort that is being made to bring peace and understanding to the world. Help us, Lord, to learn your ways and serve your will. Take from us all hatred, suspear, fear and distrust. And draw us ever into a closer fellowship with one another. Show us how to use the freedom that you have given to us for the establishment of your kingdom and make us instruments of your peace in our homes, our neighbourhood, our country and in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the progress of your mission here in Sanderstead and in Riddlesdale. And Father, we ask for your guidance and help in the tasks to which you have called us. We pray, Lord, for a growing unity with Christians of other churches and denominations in obedience to Christ's will. We pray for our church officers, for members of our parochial church councils, and their responsibility in making known the gospel of Jesus in our neighbourhood. We pray for the ministry of this church and the churches which represent us. Help us, Lord, to be equipped and instructed in the truths of our faith, faith 
so that we may share it with others. We pray, Lord, for those who share in the ministry of care, comfort, those who minister to the sick, the sorrowful, the elderly and the lonely. We pray, Lord, for our wider diocese of Southwark, remembering especially this day, our Bishop Christopher, Jonathan. We pray for ourselves, Lord, as church members, that we may have grace to proclaim through our own lives the joy of Christ's victory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for ourselves. We thank you, Father, for the gift of this new day. Another day to experience your goodness and your wonder in creation. Father, help us to be mindful of each other. Help us to remember that we are the hands and eyes and ears of Christ. We pray, Lord, for those who are ill in our midst. We continue to pray for Kim Brown and for Alison Brewster. We pray, Lord, for those who grieve amongst us, especially Angela Johnson. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, Hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name. Through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And so as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes.